thank God for the ministry of John Lewis. Amen. Did a great job. Always does. Such a man of boldness and it stirs you up every time. Um, Wednesday night and Pastor Iron Petrie with your amazing ministry. Listen, I'm fixing to start turning y'all loose today. You fixing to hear from Donald Henderson. And so um, I've been preaching to y'all for six months straight. It's time for y'all to hear some people. <laughs> and those of you that are watching, I have people in this ministry that are going to bless you. So I don't want you to go anywhere. Uh, because when people connect with you online, they're looking for you. You know, it's Petri, Pastor Petri. Oh, he ain't preaching. No, the word is coming. You're about to be blessed, so don't you go any. Um, the, the Spirit of God has dealt with me that it's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to get out and preach the kingdom. Start easy, just sweatless time of ministry. The anointing was strong. Revelation was flowing. People's minds were being stretched <laughs> because I talked about some of the things I've been talking to you about in Wednesday night my baby back with me and y'all ain't seen her for a while so come up here real quick dear blowing them kisses hallelujah you know you have to make sure you show your wife because saints of God you know when, when you show up without your wife they'll start prophesying marriage problems and stuff and we ain't seen in a while I wonder <laughs> we coming up on two years next Friday so we might be missing in action next Sunday. Um, and so, um, baby, just greet the people real quick. We miss you guys so much. We love you. You are our family. And we are. So, I'm so happy to be here. As soon as I walked in, I'm like, oh, my Lord, because I haven't been here, you know. And Virginia was the first time I stepped foot in a church since the pandemic. I, from the pit of hell. There's no place like the house of God to worship and visit your father's house. And I remember my mother told me one day when I was young, 20, didn't want to go to church. She said, I had Ashley already. She said, how would you feel if your daughter visited you once? I was here most of the time, but don't miss at least Sunday and Wednesday. So I just wanted to share, don't let uh, the media and everybody trick you into that because that is not true. So, love you guys. <laughs> hey, man. It is not for convenience. It is not so you can make some excuse about, well, I worship better because I don't have no distractions. And I'm already distracted if you think like that. No. There is a gathering that God has, because the church is coming back strong. And we're not going to allow the enemies to steal the gathering of the saints of God because we have the church is the people yeah but he told the people yeah. so he told the church to get together <laughs> and so never using well you ready man now you can't preach long you got to be done in about 30 minutes we go we got to stick with what we try to try to tell the folks from some of these other ministers for um, the next couple of weeks and I'm going to get um, of a ministering to us so we can all be built up. I believe you're going to encourage us. Come on up. Y'all give Donald a Amen. I said amen. Stay, stay, stay standing if you don't mind. I mentioned this to Elder Cedric of God really and uh, during testimony time they would say it is sure good to be, good to be in the house of the Lord. There's no other place that I would rather be at this time in my life than in the house of God. Amen. I only got a few minutes. All I need. I want you to hold your Bible up or your, elect your electronic device. Because I believe in, that, you know what, if you don't say nothing, the devil will run all over you. You got to say something. You got to, you got to feel the atmosphere with the word of the most high God. Are you listening to me? So I want you to say this. Say, this is my Bible, which is the word 
most high God. I can be what it says I can be. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I got ears to hear. My mouth speaks the word of God. I see what God sees. My heart is cultivated with the word of God. And my mind has the understanding of God. Amen. Be seated. I speak that and declare it over my life every day. In all thy getting, get an understanding. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I want to thank Minister Shaw, Minister Fred, and the whole musician and the praise team. What a wonderful job that you all always do. Appreciate you all. Amen. There are some things that God wants to say to us as a people. And there are some things that God wants to say to us as a church. There are some things that, you know what, we must get deep down in our spirit, man, and not be moved by what we see or the latest thing that's going on in society. Social media does not dictate unto us of how we should be or how we should do or what we can have. It is amazing that, you know what, we are the last one to be heard. You're going to get that in a minute. The church has not been heard yet in society yet. But there is a voice that is coming forth. I want to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm, I'm going to try, I'm gonna try to teach you, but I'm telling you something. That's some stuff that, you know what, need to be out. It needs to get out. It needs to get into our hearts. It needs to get within our earth. <laughs> You'll get that in a minute. First Thessalonians chapter 4, it said in verse 1, it says, Finally then, finally then. Paul said, wait, wait a minute, guess what? There's something else that I need to say. Finally then, brother, we request and we exhort you in the Lord Jesus. That as you receive from us instructions as to how you ought to walk and please God just as you have actually do walk. Guess what Paul said? Paul said, guess what? There's a, you know what? I see your walk. I understand your walk. But I got to give you some more instructions in regards to your walk. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen to me. One of the things that is that he's trying to provide specific instructions. So God is realigning, resetting, recalibrating the church. We are so much looking at the world, but there needs to be some realigning that needs to be go forward. Come on, somebody. I said we can't go forward. So if you look at the word instruction, it means direction or order. So God is wanting to, guess what, reestablish order in the way in the church that the church can move forward. Too long has the church been on this side, but it's time for the church to move on that side. Come on, somebody. You got to say amen. You got to move fast with me today. Pastor, only give me 30 minutes. You got to go fast. Oh, you listen to me. I said, so in other words, there has to be some order, has to be reset or set in your life. There has to be some direction to be set in your life. So what we must do, we must be willing to take instruction. If we cannot take instruction, we cannot move forward in the things of God. Every miracle that Christ did, he gave instruction. Because you know what? He, this is what he said. The very thing that he first did, this is what he said. He said, I, 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 guess what? Go bring me some Cicerins. Go bring me some Cicerin. And fill them with water. Now, they was out of wine. He was at a wedding. 
Now, you would think, what in the world do he need with some Cicerins? Why would you want to fill them with water? Are you listening to me? But this is what you call instruction, direction, order. So when he did that, guess what? The water turned into wine. Can I tell you the problem with the church? Is that you know what? We don't want to follow instruction. We want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. We don't want nobody to tell us about nothing. I got this. I, I got something to tell you now. We've been mesmerized. One of the things that God been speaking to me about the word mesmerize. What is the word mesmerize? We have looked at a way for such of a long time. Guess what? We start believing that's got to be the way it is. We have been looking at, you know what? Ministry have come. I know I'm like a Gallican going this morning, but I got to be. So in other words, we got to get back to what we, watch this, follow The Bible said they tell somebody, say, I'm fighting for you. I'm going to continue on. For this is talk about sex in the church. So I'm not going to talk about the physical part of sex. But I'm going to talk about, see, in here, you're a good lover of God. But when you leave and go outside, you get another partner. You change partners. Oh, you listen to me. I said you change partners. Guess what? Most of us, if not all of us, we will not commit any type of fornication or adultery. But guess what? But when we leave the house of God, we change partners. The number one thing that Christ came to do was to manifest, manifest his love. Number two, it was to reveal himself. Number three, Paul was writing to the, to the church and he was telling them that we need to go further. We need to excel the more in these areas. That's what he said. You need to excel the more. In other words, you need to go further than where you are. I, I, can I tell you something? This next move of God, if we're not willing, Pastor already said it in another form, if we're not willing to let go, we're not going to see the glory of God. Not as what we read. The church, the body of Christ, is withholding three. I, I, I said, come on. I said, we love when it's convenient. And when we leave the house of God, we switch partners. We don't know. Guess what? It is a... It, so my question is, what are you revealing? My question is, what are you revealing? Let me say this to you. This is the greatest hour of the church in our lifetime. I want to go back to the word of mesmerize. Mesmerize generally makes friends with complacency. If we look to the tear from the word of God, basically, let me say it like this. If you look at something long enough and you hear something long enough, you'll think that's so. 
I, but Corona. Ah, I said Corona. If you look at it long enough over you, or you listen to me, you think that way. If you look long enough at pornography, it'll get you. If you look at it long enough, you'll think you want to do some of them things. I know that's not good English, and my wife's going to get me. You understand what I'm saying? If you look at it long enough, if you listen to it long enough. See, if you listen to R&B long enough, that's all you want to do is listen to Luther. And when it get time to the house of God, we can't worship because we got other stuff that's inside of our spirit man. That's what causing us to look outside instead of look unto God. We can't hear. Mesmerized and complacency cause us to become deficient in the area of our hearing the voice of God. Causing us to stay focused on what we should stay focused on. If you would meditate day and night, you shall have success everywhere you put your well, we wonder how come the body of Christ is not pushing back this devil. I, I said, we wonder why we're not pushing back this devil. The reason why is because it has got us to be mesmerized in such a way we can't even think about the promises of God. We forget what God had said. Children of Israel, the 12 spies, they all saw the same thing. Do you not think that we do not know and have understanding about Corona? Yeah, we understand. We know. But here's the deal. Joshua said, choose. The question is, are we going to choose what C and N says? CBD? Are we going to choose to believe the report of the Lord? Well, I mean, I, I'm just asking, I mean, who, who are we going to believe? What, what, who, who rules? I, I, Paul said, you know what, there's something else I got to say. Say, so guess what? I want you to pay attention how you walk. When people see you, who do they see? We got to get back to where we need to be. We cannot allow, listen to me, complacency will steal your fight. When you get mesmerized with something besides the word of God, it'll steal your fight. It'll steal your joy. It'll steal your faith. You ever been talking? One of my, we got 11 grandkids now, and one of my grandkids, and uh, we can be watching television, and I can say something to her, and she not say nothing. I said, do you not hear me? She said, well, what did you say? Hear me calling. Oh, Somebody's going to get that in a minute. You cannot even hear me calling. What are we going to do? Go, Father. I'm a Cowboys fan. So here's the deal. Back in 1995, his mom and or his mom called him. I can't remember now exactly, but they talked. You will never get out of your situation. She said, because you see, watch this, you see yourself bigger than life. I'm good. 
Not worrying about nobody else. Found for him. Church, body. But you know what concerns me a little? I wonder when we are outside those doors. Tell people where you attend church. Tell him where I went to church at. I couldn't wait to tell him about the goodness of God. When I told him the church that I attend where I go, guess what he said? And I want to say to you of the things that I've, I've already talked about, we are a good church. Brother, with our love, relationship, he wants us to go further. He wants us to take love outside these doors. He wants people to see Christ within our lives when we go outside these doors. He wants to see, he wants us to exemplify and, and guess and it's our responsibility. There are people that are close to you, next to you, friends of yours, would never get a chance to meet pastor, but they'll see you. It's time. Now is the time. Just to, I'm going to say something, play church. He has left us. I'm going to give you something to really ponder on. He has left you and I in charge. Now, what are we going to do? We're in charge of earth. It's in groaning. So what are we going to do with what he has given us? Watch this. Authority for Church, it's time. One of the things I'm so grateful for is that, you know what, pastors has had us above the curve. As if he knew that this was coming. That we was already petition. We got to rise up. And we got to fight. Did you hear what I just said? We cannot sit any longer him watch what I'm saying this will mess you up when he left you in charge if pastor put be like the one with the one talent say he 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 is I'm telling you we got to make time for those outside the body of Christ we got to fight for those outside the body of Christ. If there is an invitation, it would be this. We got to get our fight back. We got to go after what God has already given us victory for. We have to walk as if it is done. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Done. It's a done deal. It's done. Victory has already been won. We've overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Bless when I come. Bless when I go. Every time I turn around. Come on, somebody. I said every time I turn around. Every time I turn around. You need to expect God to do something. Hallelujah. When you wake up in the morning time, the devil ought to be afraid. It's all trembling. Because you woke up. Where's well, time for us to wake up? In a, in a state of complacency. No longer can we be mesmerized by, you know, what things that we hear and things that we see and it captivate our mind and captivate our thought in such of a way that we lose sight of what God has said. One of the things that, for instance, that where you can watch and see what's going on. See, listen to me. If we don't stay as we should unto the Lord, our relationship with the Lord, then we're at a distance. We can't see when he moved. But we know the song said when he moved, just like that. Tell somebody, say, it's time to move. 
I said, tell somebody, say, it's time to move. I said, come on, now, t- tell them like you mean it. Say, it's time to move. I said, tell somebody, say, it's time to turn it up. Tell somebody, say, it's time to turn it up. You say, where are all the people at? They here. You see them? God does. You see them? Look to somebody say they come. Jesus said, he said, I hear. I only say what I hear my father saying. I only do what I see him doing. I'm telling you this here, church, you know what? Don't let BLM, COVID-19, What is it, LGBT? We recognize it. That's when we need to start shooting. We start need to be making decrees and declarations that that thing come to naught in Jesus' name. That's not the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Won't you lift your hands up before the Lord? You know, you said um, so much. One of the things, though, that <clears throat> that I know we we need to focus on is this uh, this fight. You know, about us losing our fight. Our you just have to be honest to assess it. That the average child of God. In this culture, we've been swept up in the culture. We just have. And we got to fight out of that thing. We got to fight out of it. We got to fight out of the world. We got to fight out of it. One of the things that amazed me most is how it looks like in this age, the church follows the world's trends. Read your Bible. They're not supposed to like us. No. We're, we're supposed to be enemies to them. And my brother said something to me the other night. He said, bro, I'm telling you, we are no better than Jesus. We are no better than Peter. We are no better than the Apostle Paul. We are no better than Peter. If you're going to stand for righteousness, you're going to clash with this world. When you stand for righteousness, you're going to come against the world and people in it. And you got to be okay with that. And it's time for us to go further. So, Father, we just receive your encouragement this morning. We receive your instruction, your admonition. We're not be deceived. When all of these things happen, do not be deceived deceived don't start listening to false prophets and the spirits of anti famines and no this gospel of the kingdom shall be spoke salvation redemption and we thank you for it and we praise you for it and father we received this word this morning we're not mesmerized By this age. Hallelujah. <laughs> you, you ministers are going to have to learn. You may be seated. Let's get our tithe and offering. You ministers are going to have to learn that you really have more time than you think you do when you get up to preach. You, you really do. Sometimes that, that clock will make you feel rushed, but no, you, you got time to get it in. You got time to get it in. I tell you, it reminds me of the time I went to, I told you, uh, boy, I miss Jan Crouch. Man, uh, Paul Crouch too. But um, I remember, like I say, the first time Jan wanted me to come to the revival in Hendersonville because I was new. She just saw me on television, but she didn't know anything about me. But she knew she wanted me to come. So, Anytime they're going to put you in front of the world and they don't know you, they're not going to give you an hour, you know, no more than you would give a stranger, you know, (laughs) 
you know, an hour in your house that you don't know. So they gave me 15 minutes to preach. And I'm like, good Lord, okay. Let me, just, and the Spirit of the Lord say, just, just start. And I started preaching. 15 minutes, that, that was they first flashed it 15 minutes. So I started out, I mean, just, just shooting like a machine gun. And then the time, because you can't see them off, uh, because they're off camera, but they're down there holding up signs and flashing time and stuff all the time. And so 15 minutes, and so I, I was trying to put everything I could in 15 minutes, and then they came back out with the next time thing. So I'm thinking it's going to be like, you know, two minutes left or something like that. They flashed it up. It said 55 minutes. And I was like, what? So I had to learn how to just shift that thing down. You know? <laughs> and I ended up preaching an hour and 15 minutes that night. And so just get up and say what the Lord said. He'll use it. He'll do what he needs to do. Because it's the Holy Spirit anyway that does the work. And so um, thank you so much. We're trying to balance. And I do want to say this before we go. You got to balance the spiritual and the natural when it comes to this virus. It is to be respected. It is not to be feared. There's a difference. It's like a snake. It's to be respected, but it's not to be feared. You don't want to fear nothing. A lion is to be respected, but not feared. And so that's the way we live. And I'm telling you, we've been in such a deficit of faith around this thing, of people not talking faith. All they talk is fear, and all they talk is doubt, and all they talk is worry. And, oh, my God, you going to do that? And, Lord, I wouldn't. And, and, and that's all they talk. Man, let me tell you something. When it comes to this thing, and, and I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm, I'm going to have to pull it together. It won't be popular, but hopefully it will be effective. The thing you need to be worrying about is not the virus. It's your health. It is your health. The focus in this nation needs to be on health. The focus in every nation is to be on health. That's why you see this thing attacking elderly people or people who are already dealing with sickness and disease. Because if you're healthy, you're going to defeat that, even if it comes up on you. And I want you every day, while you're masking up and all of that, what are you putting in your body? You're going after disinfectants, but vitamin C is out there. Have you been stocking up on that? Have you been eating right? Have you been making sure your immune system is boosted? Have you been making sure that you're resting? These are the things that we need to focus on, see, because I believe nothing is smarter than God. There ain't nothing on this earth that your immune system won't take care of if it's in good shape. Ain't nothing smarter than God. God knew Corona was coming when he created you. And he put inside of you a fighting system. But most of us, let's just be real, have so damaged our bodies that we sit up with all these things we deal with. So I don't want you fearing this thing. And I, don't want, I want you to teach people to get out of the fear of it. Be respectful, socially distanced. I don't believe in being all up in people's faces. Just, just stay out of my face. <laughs> just, just stay, stay out. My, you keep your distance. Don't be all up in my face hollering. I don't want to be up in yours. I, I, we will respect all those things, but build your health. Are you listening to me? Am I still on? 
Are we still rolling? Listen to me, people. Build up your health. You have had six months to work on your health, to work on your body, to get your system and your body back to optimum health. That's your defense is being healthy. Thank you for your enthusiasm. That's your defense. That's your defense. And so we thank God for the victory. Now, I want you to make some confessions when you give. Y'all ready? Because we're going to close out with our giving. And as we begin to come down with the giving, I want you to make sure you don't, you know, you keep your distance from people. If you want prayer for anything, we're here to pray. And like I told you, when we're in close proximity, we will pray for you. We'll put the mask on. If you want to fellowship, put the mask on. And uh, But I will pray for you. I will pray for you right here at this altar if you need it. And so miracles are happening. Blind eyes were open. The man of God who was preaching before me in Virginia uh, that Wednesday night, um, blind eyes were open. People were being healed. God ain't, God ain't stopped doing nothing that he wants to do. We just got to believe him and keep looking to him. All right? Are y'all ready to go? Stand up on your feet. Now I'm going to say this again. Take care of your body. This is a wake-up call for the church, for people. Take care of your health. Take care of your health. What are you going to eat today? What are you, I uh, just probably messed up everybody's meal. <laughs> what, what are you going to put in your body? Take care of your health. That's my admonition to you. Take care of your health. We're going to be harping on that and harping on that because that is the will of God. I wish above all that you prosper and be in health won't you healthy and you won't even have to worry about it hallelujah you won't have to worry about anything no diabetes if you just take care of your health you don't have to worry about anything no cancer if you take care of your health no anything you take care of your health hallelujah now father I feel you pulling on that and we receive it do you receive the Lord today you receive his, his, his instruction to you eat right rest stay out of stress get supplements go to the store this weekend get supplements to build your health go get checkups to build your health God wants you healthy thank you Father and no found now Father we thank you for increase in Jesus name we've already prayed for it earlier we receive it now Father Wednesday let us come ready to receive this word and let us go be a light to the world and the salt of the earth in Jesus' name. I love you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Be ready to come to take some notes.